Hi everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland, the go-to place to learn about Icelandic history, culture, language, society, and nature. My name is Jules, and today I'm going to be sharing about unique souvenirs that you can get in Iceland. These are not the only unique souvenirs, of course, that you can get in Iceland, but it's a good starting point for you to use when you're thinking about what you would like to bring home as one of your memories. So the first, which is arguably one of the most popular unique souvenirs, even though this list is in no way in any type of order of like most popular or whatever else, but still. The first is an Icelandic sweater, which is called a Lopa Pesa in Icelandic. And this sweater is kind of like a, a national treasure. It's a national symbol of Iceland, besides the flag, of course. And many Icelandic people, if not all of them, own a Lopa Pesa. And it's a really beautiful design. I own it. They are typically made from Icelandic wool. So Icelandic sheep have been isolated for uh, more than a thousand years. And so they have a very unique type of wool that they grow in order to help them be able to survive in this environment. And so the Icelandic sweater is made with that wool and is super beautiful. It's all different types of colors, all different types of styles. And to get one though, that is unique and will last you a long time, it is highly recommended and encouraged to get one that is made by hand here in Iceland. So made by people who are in Iceland, who have been producing the wool, you know, designing, knitting, and now selling. And one of the places to do that is at the Hand Knitting Association of Iceland. And another place I recommend is called Aulafoss. These are not the only places, but of course they are places that uh, for sure sell hand knitted sweaters. And they're beautiful. And I do know people who've had them for decades. Some people have had their sweater for their lives. Of course, you know, when you're an adult and you get it, and maybe if you don't change size too often, you can be able to keep that same sweater. So they last a long time and they're a great gift. As I mentioned in a previous video, they are a bit expensive for some people. They're around a couple of hundred dollars. So just know though that I consider this to be like an investment because you will have it for a long time and you can get the taxes back um, just as long as you get that tax back information when you go to buy the sweater at the store. You can of course buy other wool products like mittens, gloves, scarves, whatever. But if you want something that's very specifically unique to Iceland, a Lopa Pesa is definitely the way to go. Number two is Icelandic art. And I'm not saying you have to go home with like a huge painting, but you totally can if you want. But there are definitely many amazing artists here in Iceland. And one place where you can get some cool Icelandic art is called Kirsuberjatreth. And I'm going to have a link to it in the description box below. And there's a collection there of like from different artists of like bowls, pictures, different trinkets and stuff that's just really unique and beautiful and specifically from Icelandic artists. So just a kind of FYI, it's not the only place. I'll see if I'll find other links and I'll put them in a the description box, but it's just something to keep in mind. And it's in downtown Reykjavik, so it's easily accessible and just gives you the opportunity to kind of open yourself up to other types of unique souvenirs from Iceland that are not just like a flag or a keychain. Number three is a fascinating one because I didn't even know if I'd be interested in this until I tried it but different flavored salts that are made in Iceland. So they have ones that are like licorice and also like different, like fascinating lava, you know, spicy salt. And there's a company called Saltverk that makes these flavored salts. Um, there are probably other companies too. I'm just kind of giving you an example. So I bought like different assortments. And I was pretty amazed at how tasty this salt is. I'm not one to normally use flavored salts, but it got me interested in thinking of how I can definitely spice up my recipes or add just flavor to my recipes in a way that I normally wouldn't because I don't mess with these different Icelandic herbs in 
my salts. So I just thought that was a pretty unique thing to use ingredients that come from Iceland in salts that is also like mined in Iceland. Uh, and you can use that for your food. So when you go home, granted this might, this gift, if you were to use it, would run out over time, but you still would get kind of a uniquely Icelandic flavor to your food at home if you were to buy something like that. Number four are beauty and skincare products by Icelandic companies that are using Icelandic herbs. Like the Blue Lagoon sells skincare products. There's another company, Anna Rosa Skincare. So there's a variety of them and I'll, I'll have links to the description box, but the most important thing is similar to the salts, they're using Icelandic ingredients, Icelandic herbs and, or silica for that matter, which you'll find in the Blue Lagoon products. And a lot of these products for many people's skin, especially because it's a very harsh environment here in Iceland, you'll find that they can potentially work really well for you. I dabble in some here and there. Uh, my skin's pretty sensitive, so I try not to do too many different types of products. But I recommend, you know, maybe when you're here, trying out one product and seeing how your skin reacts to it or use a sample at the store or something. But this is definitely a unique product to have. And this industry here in Iceland is continuing to grow, especially as people are using more greenhouses to grow some of these herbs or they're kind of branching out and just like going more worldwide with shipping and things like that. So beauty and skincare products in Iceland might be that unique souvenir that you bring home for yourself or a loved one. Next up is Icelandic candy, which is a topic all on its own. Icelandic people love themselves some candy and chocolate, licorice, gummies, all the things that you can think of when it comes to candy. Icelandic people have usually some type of version of it. I recommend trying the different kinds. So if you go into stores like Kronan or Hagkup specifically has an aisle called Nameland and Name means candy in Icelandic. So Candyland, which is like a rainbow over the aisle and it's a huge assortment of candies which you can pick and choose the one that you want, put it in a bag, it gets weighed and you pay for the candy. It's not very expensive and it's actually not expensive at all. It's pretty inexpensive. So you can go in and try different ones. I will warn you though, there are many candies like the licorice ones that have like a salty or peppery type of powder on them and it can be really intense for your palate if you're not used to it. Many Nordic people love those candies, but if you're not used to it, just you know proceed with caution. <laughs> but definitely try it out. Maybe it might be something that appeals to you, but bringing home Icelandic candy is, I feel, really fun. Before I moved to Iceland and I would come back and forth to visit, I would bring back candy to give to my coworkers or my friends. And sometimes I would bring back the candy that's like, really intense for your palate, the licorice ones, and just see how they react. Most of them reacted the way I did, which would, they felt like they were being poisoned. <laughs> and some people really liked it. Uh, very few people that I know really liked it. But there's of course licorice that's just plain black licorice. And then there's candy that has marzipan in it. There's candy, like I mentioned, gummies. There's so many different kinds of delicious Icelandic candies. I did a video about delicious Icelandic snacks and in there I talked about some candies. So I'll link to that too if you wanna check out that video. But I'll also put a list in the description box of different types of Icelandic candies that you can potentially pick up and the ones to maybe look out for. So even though I just talked about Icelandic candies, I consider that outside of a regular food group because the next type of unique souvenir for you to bring home is different types of Icelandic food. And Icelanders have their traditional food from back in the day where it was like shark and dried fish, skid. It's been something that Icelandic people have been eating for a long time. So those are different things that you can bring home with you if you wanna eat Icelandic lamb. That of course is one of the traditional foods and you can carry all of those things usually. I mean, I can speak for at least going to the US. Um, you can bring back lamb with you, hot dogs, toppings for the hot dogs. So I said that people are known for their hot dogs because they like to put fried onions, this, you know, kind of mayonnaise sauce, ketchup, 
a sweet type of mustard. So the hot dog business in Iceland is really one that is popping because Icelandic people eat it way more probably than the tourists. The tourists come and they'll have a hot dog and maybe they'll like want to have a couple more but it's pretty common for Icelandic people at parties or when they're hungry after drinking or just for you know midday snack they'll go and get themselves a hot dog. I wouldn't warn you though if you do decide to bring dried fish back with you please don't open it in the airplane and I only say that because even though to you you've gotten used to the smell of this dried fish it's a really pungent smell and everybody else on the airplane does not want to smell that. Okay, I, I sat next to a guy one time who was doing this and it was just like, every time he opened the container, it was like, bam, got smacked in the face with dried fish smell. And it's just like, oh God. And I don't eat fish or meat or anything any longer. I've been vegan for five years. So it is just not a very pleasant smell regardless if you eat it or not. And I seem to disagree. If you're in an enclosed space where there are other people who have not consented to this, please, Please don't open it. I just, you'll be, you'll be doing yourself and everyone else a favor. <laughs> and the last unique souvenir that I recommend is to bring home some Icelandic alcohol. Now, if you don't drink, maybe you'd like to bring this back for somebody else or not at all. That's totally fine. But if you are a person that enjoys some spirits or some delicious beers, Icelandic Alcohol has definitely come a long way since it was banned in this country some decades ago. And funny enough, in this country, beer was legalized on March 1st, 1989. So that's just like a random, random fact for you uh, regarding that. But since then, Icelandic people have really developed kind of a unique culture around microbrews and also distilleries for making different types of spirits. There's Icelandic vodka like Reykja or Katla. There's Icelandic beer from Enstuk, uh, Kalte, Viking. There are different types of breweries here, many to choose from. I recommend definitely checking that out. You can get them in the duty free when you arrive. When you're leaving, you can pick them up in the duty free to take with you. There's a variety of really delicious uh, spirits here. There's some liqueurs, this blueberry liqueur that we really like. And there's another one that I have, the flavor I can't think of right now, but it's actually our favorite one. And I'll put a link to it in the description box. But there is just so many delicious types of spirits and beers. I'm a beer drinker. I get a kick out of the new beers that come out, especially in the winter time around Christmas. Christmas beers in Iceland is a huge thing. They only roll them out for a specific set of time and you can get those beers, enjoy them, and then they're gone. But throughout the year, there's of course a variety of beers that are not Christmas beers that are really tasty too. So check those out if you're one of those people or if you have someone in your life that you think would enjoy a unique gift who likes alcohol, for sure check that out uh, in Duty Free or in a Veen Boothin where they sell this type of alcohol. And gin, just as like a side note, gin has become like really popular for Icelandic companies to be making gin now. So they're just expanding in all these different areas when it comes to alcohol and it's kind of exciting in a way because you're getting these different tastes and then pairing it with like different foods. So I'm, I'm, I'm totally going off on a tangent here, <laughs> mainly because I get excited when I talk about this. I really enjoy that part of how the, cu the culture has evolved and I find it super fascinating. So those are some of the unique souvenirs that I recommend, seven categories in all. I would love to hear if there's any souvenirs that you've gotten from Iceland or you've heard of that you recommend. Definitely put it in the comments section. I hope you found this video to be helpful or fun to watch for that matter. If any of that, feel free to give it a thumbs up and share it with people if you think they're interested in this or if they're coming to Iceland so that they can have in mind some unique souvenirs to bring home with them. Maybe to you if they're coming to Iceland, you never know. If you're interested in hearing interviews from Icelanders, expats that have been living in the country, or just like tips about Iceland, 
I have a podcast called All Things Iceland in which I go more in depth into like historical information and different types of info about Iceland that maybe you wouldn't find in other places. So the link for that is in the description box below. Check that out if it's of interest to you. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video pops up. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>